Hey guys, in this video, I am going to edit my email marketing campaign from start to finish, which includes graphics and actually laying out the email to be sent, okay? So I have opened Photoshop. This is the editing program I use. You could use this. Um, the cheaper version is Photoshop Elements, which will be fantastic. Or you could use Canva if you want, okay? So I have a folder called Email List Collateral where I keep all of my graphics from previous marketing campaigns and what I do is I save them as a JPEG and as a PSD file which means it's editable and they have layers so as you can see on the right hand side I have layers and I'm adjusting you know a previous template this makes my email marketing um, kind of go quicker because I'm able to take you know a variety of previous templates and change things up a bit so I changed this from the Pink Friday black sale right uh, for 30% off to 20% off of everything and I have um, just deleted the section where the coupon code used to be like Pink Friday 30 and I'm making it into a new coupon code I changed it to um, BTS 20 for back to school 20 so this is my back to school email I did it I want to do school because I think that's easy to remember um, but I didn't want it to be that long just to be honest so I thought BTS 20 was was absolutely fine it's important that you guys remember that when you you know obviously offer a percentage off and people have to use a coupon code don't forget to really highlight what that coupon code is at least once in the email if not multiple times and you'll see in this email that I'm creating I do it actually multiple times so I adjusted the text where the actual coupon code is a little bit larger than the word coupon code and in this particular graphic um, on the top I actually had some text it's just the look of my graphic I had it um, so I'm changing it to you know bring in um, kind of change the mood a bit because this is a back to school type of email so I wrote perfect for back to school stationery and I'm just adjusting it um, to make sure it's a good fit and then again in this graphic I have this little blue type of like you know box arrow situation and there I'm gonna put a little benefit okay in there to kind of grab people's attention because this is a back to school type of email and so I'm focusing on back to school items so I put you know it comes with lines okay I didn't like the word complete with lines so I try to change things up but I wasn't quite sure yet so I left it alone for a bit I'm gonna come back to it later and in the meantime I took the designs I have on those note cards they're just overlays okay so I go ahead and actually remove those layers and start to Photoshop my own and you'll see that in just a second you see I locate those and I delete them out okay now they're blank note cards I open my program in design and I grab um, the designs I want to feature again I'm trying to really target the back to school market um, and so I'm putting what I feel is the best fit for a back to school type of themed email and so it's my line stationary it also happens to be my most popular for kids at the moment and so the you know the trick here guys is for yourself is to put in your most popular items for that category so I'm doing back to school which is kids you know people are buying things for their kids it's line stationary that's working it makes sense and people love it so I changed that whole with lines to with writing lines me and my assistant both agreed it just felt better than just the word with lines okay okay so now I put a girl version and a boy version because obviously in this case for back to school stationery, you could buy it um, gender you know, specific and so we have a masculine version and a feminine one and these two are exactly the same style but I just want to show it in a you know a masculine color and a feminine color to show people what's possible but again these are my most popular designs at the moment okay um, so now I'm just editing some of the bottom text to tell people hey you save 20% off and you could get it on modernpinkpaper.com um, so after I kind of looked over everything on that graphic it seemed to be fine all right and now I'm about to open some additional graphics these additional graphics are gonna go also in the email I was trying to look for category uh, specific graphics that allow people to shop boys stationery and girls stationery okay and again I just go through my library of images I've created far in the past and I just happened to pick these two I picked one with the pink background and a blue background oh sorry not pink it was purple and a blue one and again it has a variety of cards um, two in this case I was trying to adjust the text here but I ended up sticking to shop boys stationery um, in the end it just felt like that made the most sense it was simple and straightforward okay it's cool to be clever but sometimes it doesn't work so I felt like being straightforward was better okay so I went to go find the layers that I could delete 
these two designs and put in what I feel are other two popular boys designs, okay? Again, I ask my assistant sometimes for her opinion because um, sometimes while I do believe I know what the most popular is, I want to get her feedback. Um, so this is another popular one. Again, staying with the theme of lined stationery. Again, true, you know, popular with my customers. It's just proven to be true. And then I go try to find another one. Again, I take a moment to ask my assistant what she feels like is a good pairing um, for the next uh, design. And again, there's, there's no really right or wrong answer. There could be a lot of really great ones, but I had to make a choice. And so I think for this next one, I didn't put a lined one. Yeah, I picked this one. Um, this is not my most, most popular. It's pretty popular, but the other one I wanted to put was a little too busy. So I didn't. Yeah, maybe I could have. I don't know. Um, so that was the boys one and this is the girls one. Again, I'm picking out my most popular designs. You may not be able to Photoshop designs in. I get that. Um, similar to what I do, but having these photos, um, with a lot of white space around where you're able to add text similar to how you see shop girl stationery is pretty important. So picture taking is fairly important. Okay. Um, for you. All right. Um, so anyway, I changed it to another line stationery, the Amelia Rose with the heart. And I took out the layer for the mermaid stationery. It was actually really, really popular. Um, but again, I can only choose two. So I kept the star one, which is down below it, the star Sophia Davis as the second girl stationery. Now, just for the record, you'll see in a moment that the girls stationery um, image you see here and the boys one will both link to something. It's really important that every image you have links to something. And these will both link to search results. The boy one will link to search results for boys stationery, including note cards and notepads, okay? And the girls ones will be for girls search results, okay? And anyway, right now I'm preparing some other graphics that I'm gonna include what happens to be very popular during the season, my backpack tags, okay? They're actually luggage tags, but um, for the kids, People love searching for backpack tags and they buy it. So I open a variety of ones that I feel are popular. And in a moment, I'm going to end up choosing which ones. But I first want to get into Aweber. This is the email marketing tool I use. Um, and I want to start setting up the email, okay? Now, I save templates and I encourage you to do so. In my email list uh, marketing webinar, I have provided templates for you guys. I actually show you how to make your own templates. And or you could just save your previous emails as a draft. Doing this helps you have consistent branded emails, okay? You see the top header. Um, just a moment, I'll go back to it. You can see that I um, have my logo on top, my main categories across the bottom, you see? And so to adjust them from there. So I just saved some of my images and I'm about to actually start inputting them, okay? Um, it's fairly easy. I go to the folder I've saved them in and then I replace the images I currently have in there. And in a second, you'll see it uh, being loaded. And like I said, having these templates saved saves you a lot of time. Having these graphics saved that are editable saves you a lot of time. This is a really good trick that I use um, that will be really helpful to you guys, okay? So I'm going through to edit things that I could immediately edit that are easy for me. So the bottom text here is pretty much all like, you know, the small fine print, which is not a big deal for me. I just pretty much tell them, hey, you get 20% off, use the coupon code, you know, it's a limited time, you know, um, you can't use it on previous purchases, blah, 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 okay? So I saw that I had the coupon code also in another section, which is really important because if I have a very long email, it's important to remind people throughout the email, hey, you save 20% off um, or whatever discount you're giving them. And here is the coupon code. So I took um, my old uh, graphic for the dad 20 uh, coupon code. It was for my father's day email. And I'm just, I didn't save the PSD file. So I'm just taking the JPEG and editing on top of that. And then I'll eventually I'll clean up the background, okay? Um, so I'm just, again, overlaying the exact same text. I liked it. It worked for me. But, of course, Dad 20 will change to um, BTS 20, which, again, is my back-to-school coupon code. Obviously, when you watch this, you can use it yourself if you want. I'm not trying to shamelessly plug my, <laughs> my website, but I'm just saying. Um, again, it's really important to make coupon code short and easy to remember. You don't want to make it so easy like thank you 20, okay? But... So people, when they start shopping, it's, you know, they're not going to be like, oh, what is it again? Don't make people work hard, okay? So I thought back to school, BTS 20 was um, perfect, okay? So anyway, 
I'm just finishing the final edits. This took me a while, I don't know why, um, with this little banner. And I'm gonna put it under one of my graphics. Again, a good reminder that if they didn't see the first graphic to remind them to use the coupon code, they're definitely gonna see this one, okay? I'm just saving it. Um, and then I'm gonna put it in the, the email. And again, I like to build the email as I go. I get some graphics set up and then I build it as I go, okay? So then I could keep looking and seeing what's missing. Um, you notice that in my first graphic, I have a shop entire store button, okay? That's important. You have to give them a call to action, okay? It's really important. And you can see the other category, um, one shop note card, shop notepads. You'll see them in a minute again. You see this shop girl stationery. It's all call to actions, okay? They have to know that not only you have beautiful images and they link to somewhere relevant, but they're clickable, okay? So um, what am I doing now? Let's see <laughs> Oh, yes, I was saving the other images to get them ready and input inside. Again, I wanted a very vertical email because I want to inspire people to buy. It's a really important uh, part of creating an email, okay? So, you know, getting people on your email list is another situation. It's really important as well. Getting a really great subject line for people to open your email, another really important thing, okay? But, you know, when they actually opened it, you want them to click and go through to your website. So make sure that you have you know, really enticing images. Remember I mentioned earlier popular items. Remember I mentioned call to action, right? But I want to include different types of images so then, again, they're inspired to buy. So right now I'm just getting the links of the items um, ready. And so I'm locating some items. I'm locating the search results. And in this case, it is the search results for boys stationery and girls stationery. Um, and it's also important, so here are these tips, right? I'm just throwing it out at you. Um, that every image, you know, obviously leads somewhere, it's clickable, but make sure that it actually makes sense where it's going, okay? I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but I have to mention it again. Um, and later you'll see that I actually double check through my email to make sure that they actually all are fine, they work, they all make sense, um, you know, so it's not irrelevant to the customer. I adjust the category um, buttons down there to what I feel like makes sense. I took away that shop top one. Um, and now you can see the don't forget to stock up on favorites. I have to remember that my customers are not only buying for kids, they might be buying for themselves. So I'm also gonna inspire them with that big graphic toward the bottom. So like I mentioned earlier, I think I did, um, my backpack tags are pretty popular during the season. And so I try to pick out the best ones. Again, I get my opinion, um, my assistant's opinion sometimes on what I feel is the best one, etc. And then I decided to create this graphic. This graphic is just a you know horizontal one where I show you two examples of luggage tags. Really simple. I probably could have done a four one or whatever, but I picked what I felt was you know fairly popular for um, boys and girls. Okay, and I just put them like this. And it takes me a you know in this case it took me a while to edit them because I want to make them visually attractive. Okay, it's not as simple as just slapping images into an email and you know editing them and putting some text and that's it sometimes you have to really make sure that it looks vis you know visually appealing it looks professional okay um and that i mean yeah it doesn't look unprofessional okay because in the back of these customers minds they don't say it out loud and say oh this looks unprofessional i'm not buying it's just the impression that they you know leave you leave on them subconsciously so it does take me a hot minute to get these you know, right, especially if I'm creating a new graphic like this. So I want to put obviously some text, some call to action text. I couldn't figure out how to do it horizontally. So you're going to see me in a moment actually make it vertically. Um, I, I'm not, you know, 100% thrilled with this vertical situation, but, um, and I could have done it differently in my opinion, but it's what's done is done. I think it'll be fine. It gets a point across, okay? So I adjust these images until I feel like it looks visually appealing. And um, I'll put this into the email again to break things up. I try to add a little like border to make it look like a button. It didn't quite work, so I deleted it. <laughs> and so this is the final image. Um, in a minute, I'm going to save it. Oh yeah, I'm trying to check. I'm trying to check the border, but it didn't obviously work. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Waiting, waiting. I know it seems like crazy that I, I'm taking this long to adjust something, but you know, when somebody clicks your email, you have to, have to try your very best to get them to click through. So it does take me some time to make sure that everything feels right. I changed luggage to backpack, which obviously makes more sense. Um, and now I'm just saving it, okay? 
And so I'm about to place it in the email. And again, I use, I strategically break things up where it makes the most sense and it becomes visually appealing. Okay. So you'll see here that I will find it again. I save all my graphics in one folder, so it's easy to find. And then I go to the luggage tag, you know, search results. Like I have this category section and I put that as the link. Okay. Um, give it a second. There it is. And, um, you see, I put the URL, I put the alt image text in there. I think I'm just looking through right now to see if everything makes sense. And again, look how I'm breaking things up. I want to make sure that it looks visu visually appealing. Okay. Now for the record, when I first started doing emails and setting up the graphics, it wasn't always this easy. Okay. Things visually appealing wasn't always visually appealing when I first started. Now I'm changing the subject line. I changed something really straightforward. This subject line really works for me. Um, and so, I mean, it, it, it performs really well. And this is just a thing about subject line guys in my email marketing um, course, I do have a cheat sheet for email subject lines. It's important that once you get people on your email list that they actually open your email. Okay. So I have a variety, huge variety of email subject lines you could use, but here's another pro tip. I go over in the course. I'm gonna tell you here, follow your competitors, follow your competitors and see what email subject lines that they have that you feel like are enticing enough. Um, you know, and then saving them. Nobody owns a subject line. Okay. So saving them and stockpiling them into your own library. In addition to my cheat sheet, um, will probably very, be very, very important. So then you could pick and choose. Okay. But no matter what, you know, it's important to test these. Okay. Even the ones I give you and see how they perform over time for you. Soon you're going to start to realize months and months and months, depending on how often you send out emails, which email subject lines perform the best for you. Okay. Um, so that's really important. I go through a whole section of subject lines and all that stuff in the email marketing course, just in case you guys are interested. If you don't have it and you're watching this, I'll put the link down below. Um, so you guys could check it out. Now I am making, um, a what's popular now section. Here's why. Um, I did some category clickable photos, uh, graphics. And of course I did the main one, um, that really goes to my entire shop, I believe, or the kids section, I forget. But now I want to actually link people to individual items. Here's why I found that when I tried it once before it, it worked really well. I picked popular items and that I kind of did the work for the customer. They didn't have to go searching around for items that they love. Now, of course, not every popular item will be things that your customers would love, but the likelihood is high. Okay. And as you can see, a Weber is giving me a very hard time here. I'm trying to adjust these in a moment. You're going to see, I'm going to give up <laughs> and get them to be just all in one column going vertically down. Um, what you also won't see in this video is when I try to adjust them and I replace them with images and I put the, you know, the links, I try to send myself a a test email and it's important you do that as well. Okay. I go through that in my email marketing course in depth, but you when you send it, okay. Um, to your own email, check the PC version and check the mobile version. Okay, guys, most people do shop on mobile, but people still do shop on PC. It's important that you do that. And again, you don't see it here, but I did do it probably where you see right now I'm stopping. Um, I did check it and I was not happy with how it looks. So eventually I made it vertical. Um, a Weber kind of crashed, so I had to redo my whole what's popular now section. Um, it didn't take me that long, but as you can see, I'm going through that. It's important by the way, guys, you know, cause you never know these systems might fail. Your computer might go crazy to hit save. You see in the bottom right hand corner, there's a save and exit and a save button hit save. Sometimes these email marketing services will auto save, but not always. So I kind of lost a few minutes of time here. So I want to go redo them. Okay. Um, so I decided that I was trying to get them all online. Again, a Weber, it was giving me a hard time. And, um, so eventually I did it all vertically. Okay. Um, while I'm trying to edit that, let's see here. Oh yeah. I try to get additional text to put in the shop. What's popular now. Again, it's, it's important to break these sections up so people understand how to kind of navigate your email. Okay. Don't worry. You're not born. You know, you don't come out of the womb knowing how to do this. You test and you test and you play around. Um, even with my email marketing course, guys, I mean, it's a great course. It's really, it really takes people from start to finish building an email list, starting one, building one, the whole, like, you know, creating an email, the marketing part, all those little details, subject line, clickable, link, everything. 
Um, but you still have to test things out on your own. Okay. It's so important. Everybody's customer is different. You know, your market's different. It's, just, I really highly recommend that you have to test things out on your own. But of course, the email marketing course kind of is like a, it's like a cheat, right? It gives you, it get, it kind of gives you like a step up not step up, many steps up. Okay. So of course things that you would have tried to test out, it might take you months or years. You don't have to do. Okay. I've done it for you, um, in the course, but there's still certain things you have to test on your own. You guys know that, right? To see what best times to send out your emails, um, and all that stuff. Okay. Sorry. That was just kind of a side note. Um, so now I'm now just putting in the images of those most popular items. Again, I, I partner with my assistant and see, Hey Jess, what do you think is the most popular? You know, and I kind of show her what I came up with, etc. And you know, I teach, I taught her how to challenge me when appropriate, when she really disagrees with something, um, to tell me, um, especially when I'm asking for her honest opinion. And but she agreed with everything I said after I showed her what I decided to put as the most popular images. Okay. And again, in a moment, you're gonna see me go to my website and make sure I click, I put in the URL for each item. For these, it has to go directly to the item, right? Because you're, I'm showing one item. But for the previous ones, it was it was a category, right? It was a search result of girl stationery. The other one was a search result of boy stationery. Okay, things have to make sense. If you lead somebody, you know, to a URL that doesn't make sense based on the, the on the image that they clicked, you know, that might hurt your conversion rate. Okay, that might hurt your bounce rate. Um, conversion rate is also really really important with emails, and you tend to have higher conversion rates with emails because you have you're sending an email to targeted you know, fans. Okay. People that really want your stuff. Okay. I know I keep sounding like a, you know, a record, you know, on repeat, but it's, it's funny how often I see people's emails that don't do the right things. I feel like are simple. So if I go over some simple things, it's not because I'm annoying. It's because sometimes some people learn differently and that's okay. Okay. Anyway, so let's see here. Oh, I think in a minute I'm going to send the self the email to myself to see what works and what doesn't. And I end up finding out that it didn't quite work the way I wanted to. Oh no, I'm putting the links in right now. Okay. Oh, and the alt image, uh, alt, uh, image, alt text. Sorry. I keep saying it wrong. Um, this is not Googleable. Googleable. Is that even a word? You know, it's, these images are not for Google, but it's important to still put it in there. So if something does not load correctly, when somebody first opens up your email, they're seeing something other than image, the word image. They're actually seeing you describing the actual image that's going to be auto, you know, populating up soon if they allow it to. Okay. So just FYI, um, that's why it's important to also be thorough, professional, put those in. Um, anyway, so now I'm just locating the items, changing the alt image text thing. Sorry, I keep saying it wrong, guys. This whole voiceover thing, I'm trying to get used to it. It's my second video for voiceover, so I hope you guys like it. I'm trying my best. Um, you saw the shop favorites down there. That leads to my whole entire store. It, I felt like that's, that's what made the most sense. Um, but I could have easily linked to the most popular items as well. I don't know. I felt like doing the whole store. Okay. So anyway, now I'm getting another graphic up because I put the whole coupon code, which is, uh, you know, use coupon code BTS 20 as its own banner. I want to put right underneath that, um, that they say 20% off. So while I write under the coupon code, I don't want to forget to remind them of the 20% off really important guys. You know, in my email marketing course, I have, I believe, uh, well, there's a lot of cheat sheets in there, but I have a cheat sheet that kind of goes over the things your email has to have to be successful. Okay. If you have the course, please use it. Okay. It goes over things that I mentioned here, but there's much more that before you send out an email, you have to hit all these points. Okay. Um, it's a point that you do this because you know, one mess up, right? There goes your back to school email. You, you send it out one time. Of course you can send up follow-ups and whatever, but you don't want to mess it up. You want to make sure you do everything that you can to get people to open, to click and to actually shop and check out. Okay. So look through that, um, that cheat sheet and that checklist really, and make sure that you utilize it. And if you do get, if you do have the email list webinar or if you want to get it, don't you don't forget to utilize a private group that you can sign up for um, that so not you can sign up for that you get for free and show us your emails before you send it out. Ask for you know our opinion so we can help you adjust it before you actually send it out. Okay. Anywho's um, 
So here it is. I'm going to put this banner in. By the way, you see me editing my email marketing campaign for back to school because originally I had a different type of email. But a lot of my emails are pre-scheduled and they're emails that are not particular to times of the year. And they get auto-sent based on when a subscriber signs up, okay? Um, so if you sign up today, for example, for my email list, um, in a couple of weeks you get an email and a, you know, a couple of months later you get an email and so on and so forth till a few months out. In the course that I have, okay, I give you examples of and ideas of what type of emails you could do. So you could actually schedule your entire emails for the entire year. And so what, that, what does that mean? That means you do a whole bunch of work at once and you technically never have to ever set up an email like this again, like what you're watching now. Um, however, you're more than welcome to obviously throughout the year do appropriate emails such as Mother's Day, Father's Day, back to school, whatever it feels like the, the biggest bang for your buck for your customers, you know. Um, but that's just a, another time-saving tip, okay. This whole campaign took me an hour to do. If I didn't have pre, you know, graphics already done, it might have taken me maybe an hour and a half-ish. It just really depends on my groove and how creative I feel. But if you don't want to have to deal with this throughout the year, guys, again, go into that part of the course. It's actually an upgraded part um, that I added a few months ago that kind of gives you all these ideas of what type of emails to send out without you having to, you know, do it consistently throughout the year. Do it once and that's it. So this is the end of this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed and saw my process from start to finish. Sorry, there's a black screen here. But um, just to quickly tell you, um, I ended up scheduling the email for Monday. I know that my customers usually shop better in the first few days of the week. Toward that weekend, they're busy. They're not opening emails. They're not shopping, okay? I have tested the CW out over time. Um, and that's what my conclusion is. I will send a follow-up email to people who have not opened the original one on Wednesday. So the first one sent out on Monday, the second one that to people that did not open the original one sent out on Wednesday. Okay. And this is how long my email is, um, going to be going on for. Then I have the, I don't have the paper next to me, but I believe on Saturday morning, um, I send everybody email says, Hey, three days left. Okay. And on Monday, I think, yeah, Monday, I tell them last day. Okay. Email. By the way, one thing you did not see me do in this video recording is me adding a limited time banner right on the top, the tippy tippy top. Okay. Right underneath my, um, logo. Okay. Cause I do want to also give them, you know, that sense of urgency, which again, I go over in my course. It's really important because otherwise they might just not care to buy at the moment. Nobody needs our product. They want it. Okay. So sense of urgency is really, really important. Okay guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. If you want more videos similar to this. Okay. And comment down below. Um, do you have an email list going on? How do you feel about you building your email list? Um, you know, everything I've did here, how hard is it for you or how easy is it for you? Okay. Um, and if you have my email marketing course, let me know down below what you think of it. I know a lot of people rave and rave about it in the private group, but let me know down below. Um, and love to hear from you. Okay guys. See you later. Bye.